Hey everyone, welcome back to my little videos. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to ombre over glitter and some marbling. Just a few techniques that people have asked for in the Glitter Mix Help and Support group. Um, this, this sort of hidden glitter look that is around everywhere at the moment on Instagram. So first of all, I'm going to put a small amount of uh, Clarity Clear down at the cuticle and make almost a little cuff, but not really. <laughs> Just pop in. It's quite a chunky mix. I think you need, you need quite a chunky mix if you're going to give this sort of hidden look because you want the glitter to stand out underneath as well a little bit. I'm using Glow Up, which is one of my favourite loose glitters. It has just got so many um, different tones to it. It's absolutely stunning. So I'm just going to pop that on. Pat it all down nice and neat. I've left this in real time. Because uh, some of the baby nail techs in the group have requested real-time videos. So I hope it's not too boring for anybody who isn't a newbie. So then with my cover powder, I think I'm using In The Buff on this one. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's In The Buff. You're just going to... Pop your first bead where that glitter ends and then really gently just take the edge of that bead and feather it up over the glitter, not going all the way up. And then obviously blend the bottom of that bead down. Then you're going to come in with another bead. Almost virtually on top of that last one. Build up some uh, opacity of colour. And again, just blending, just nice and gentle, little light touch. Patting and pressing, bringing the rest of that bead down towards the free edge. Always paying attention to your side walls. Nine times out of ten, if your shaping's gone wrong, it's because you might have uh, bulky shoulders or, yeah, side, side walls are way more important than anybody ever talks about, I think. Application, that is. I mean, obviously you can fix anything with a file, but just try and keep it neat as you can. Now I'm having a look at that and I think I'm deciding that it's the colour's not quite built up enough in some areas. So I'm coming in with another bead, just working in really small beads, taking my time. Don't rush yourselves. Absolutely no need to rush. Speed comes with practice. Like worry about getting it right and doing it right over and over and over again. And and your speed will come naturally. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to cap the glitter now. <clears throat> Excuse me, sniffing. You'll know you get your glitter's properly covered. Because it'll kind of go matte. It'll stop 
giving its beautiful sparkle and it'll go dull. Just check in from all angles to make sure it's nice and neat. Now I'm going to move on to something a little bit different. Same sort of vibe. I'm going to do a neon frame. This colour is so bright. Absolutely freaking love it. Orangutan. So again, you're just going to put your bead down. And then just, it's really gentle right at the edge. Just going to feather it. Then I'm going to do the same on the opposite end and both sides. Working in teeny tiny beads. All the glitter mix, uh, acrylic coloured powders, the creative colour range, they all need capping. So that you can use them more like paint almost, just for colour. And they're so, so packed full of pigment. A little goes a long, long way. But if you work in those little beads, then you won't end up with a super bulky nail. I know it's really tempting to want to go in with the bigger beads and everybody's doing this, you know, one bead method and all the rest of it. But I've been doing nails for 15 years now and then sometimes it goes in one bead, sometimes it goes in four or five. It literally just depends what you're doing. So don't worry about how many beads you're using. Sorry, it's taken me a while to get these uh, recorded and edited. Just been life. <laughs> Look at me faffing. I tell you what, it's not until you watch yourself back that you realise if you're a faffer or not. I am definitely a faffer. Hence why this video is like 11 billion years long. And if you're still here and listening to me, then uh, get yourself a cookie because I'm bored of myself already. <laughs> So in the middle, I'm using like the palest pink that Glitter Mix do. <clears throat> it's like, it's called Innocence and it's, it's, a, it's more of a white, a creamy white with a hint of pink. And it is absolutely incredible for milk bath nails, uh, anything like that. And it, it goes over neon really, really well. So I'm going to make this sort of paler middle. And, and leave the orange around the frame. I'm going to be putting some stickers in the middle later on in the video. So you don't want to hear me rabbiting, so I'm just going to let you watch.
Okay, onto the marble. I'm using absolutely mint and polar bear. Now, there's loads of different ways that you can do a marble with acrylic. This is just one way. So I've picked up the two colours and I'm going to get it nice and neat at the cuticle so I don't have to worry about it later. And I'm going to dip into the Absolutely Mint and the Polar Bear at the same time. Get my brush into a, a bit of a point, I suppose, and then just kind of swoosh it through. Sorry if you can hear the uh, doggo pacing about in the background. He needs his uh, nails clipping. So I always try with a marble to kind of go on a diagonal almost with the brush. Like swoosh up one side and down the other, up one side and down the other. And de depending on what kind of marble effect I'm looking for. Monty, lie down, baby. Depending on what kind of... Monty, lie down. What kind of effect I'm looking for. It depends which technique I use. So this is the double dip technique. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I will do another one. Uh, after this where you pop the beads on top of each other but pick them up singularly and it does give a slightly different effect you're going to want to cut your marbles in clear don't want to be filing off any of those beautiful swirly bits all oh, flipping out the cat's here now it's like bleeding noah's ark yes hello miss snow here's me thinking i've got half an hour to sit and do this while the kids are upstairs or asleep or whatever and uh, I'm just sat in the front room chilling. I got the dog on my lap. He's a Labrador. He's not a lap sized dog, but he's on my lap. I'm trying to hold my phone to do this recording. My cat's coming in and meowing at me as well. Yeah, okay, so you're gonna want to, to cap your marble in clear acrylic. So this is the second kind of marble that I do, and it does give a slightly different effect. Uh, but again, you're going to want to go in and get that cuticle really neat and tidy first of all. It makes such a difference to the stress levels when you've got the cuticle done. And then you can just get onto the exciting pretty bits. Then pick up a fairly wet bead of white and then the same again with the absolutely mint which is absolutely mint i think it gives a slightly more defined marble um than the than the double pickup method but again once you've got your colors on just give your brush a little a little wipe and get it into a, a bit of a point. Don't mess about with it. You see, that's the thing with marble. I am a bit of a faffer, to be fair. And I do find it difficult to leave it alone. Like, once you've got it looking pretty decent, like, don't go in there 
and faff about with it more because you're just going to end up with a muddled up mess. But I think that the lovely thing about marble is that every single one of them is different. Like you never get two the same. And you can marble loads of different colours in together, but just be careful, like I say. You don't want to fiddle about with it too much. Try and use colours that um, contrast well with one another. If you use colours that are too similar, then it will be a lot less defined. See, I was just pointing out there that I've missed a little bit. But that's no big deal because you just go in and get a teeny, teeny, tiny beads. And just kind of, you know, can fill in any gaps. Take your time with it, gentle. Marble took me quite a long time to get a handle on because naturally I'm quite heavy handed. And this whole, you know, being quite, you know, this light touch, gentle light touch, it doesn't come naturally to me. Which I think is why I'm so rubbish at hand-drawn nail art. Because I just, I don't have a naturally light touch. But that's looking all right. I'm pretty happy with that. Going to cap it and then it'll be ready for filing. When I'm capping glitters and marbles, uh, obviously the surface is fairly uneven. So I try and make sure that my clear acrylic is slightly wetter than I would, would normally use it. It just helps it to flow over. And I have to say, the Glitter Mix um, acrylic system is fantastic, does a fantastic self-leveling property. So it just kind of flows into all those little cracks and and crevices and you end up with a really lovely smooth even nail So off camera I've filed and buffed all the all the tips because they're dead fiddly when you're not working on a real person. And now I'm gonna go in and top coat the glitter ombre and Monty please lie down. With our stainless steel top coat. So I'm going to do the glitter ombre and the two marbles and then I'm going to come in with some nail art stickers on the neon nail. It's in the lamp for a 60 second cure and it has the most lovely glassy finish ever. I have to say, I feel like I wish I'd um, left one of these marbles matte. Oh, there we go, look. Left it in on purpose. Flipping things. Yeah, I have to say, I do wish I'd left one of the marble nails matte because it just looks so stunning with that matte finish. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have a lot of people who ask for matte. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's super classy. at that so pretty reminds me of uh, 
green onyx. But you can see here how the two different techniques, actually they, they are very, very similar, but they do give a slightly different end result. One is definitely softer and the other more defined. Here we go, ready for some sunshine stickers. I use a pair of really pointy tweezers um, to take my stickers off the back end. I think technically they're probably eyelash tweezers, but they work brilliantly for taking stickers off. And this is a super fun, easy way to add a bit of, you know, something to an accent nail or... And I love the way this looks with the sort of, you know, the neon around the edges and then this slightly paler colour in the middle. Just adds a bit more dimension. Oh look, she got shakes. <laughs> old old nail tech here. <laughs> Shaky cheeky. See, so I think I've decided on just like one little palm tree more. And I think the thing with nail stickers is quite often you might put them on and you think, oh it doesn't look right. You have to use enough and kind of not fill the space, but build on it. You know, if I'd have just popped one in the middle, I don't think it would have looked right. So you kind of, you know, you've got to build it up a little bit. Don't be scared. And then I've only put one top top coat on here because obviously I'm just doing it for... For the video but if I was to be doing this on a real person then I would double top coat and this stainless steel top coat is perfect for going over stickers and that kind of thing it's a slightly thicker viscosity than gloss like a boss which is the other top coat that I use from glitter mix they're both absolutely stunning but the stainless is, is slightly thicker And that's your lot.